Hi, I'm Liza Monroe and I'm a member of MOSES. We're headed to Milwaukee to take part in a Reform Now action and our concern is to focus on GPS monitoring and revocations issues. Good morning. My name is Lavelia Ball Johnson. We're here in front of St. Ben's Ministry, the Fellowship Hall. Um, we're here today on behalf of the 11 by 15. Uh, we have a lot of different organizations coming from throughout the Milwaukee and Wisconsin area. And uh, basically, we're focusing on uh, the revocation hearings and the uh, GPS system that the DOC has going now that we don't believe is uh, fair. The ratio of false positives was 77 to 1. Okay? We're sending people back to prison on, a, on one chance out of 77 that they might have done something wrong. That's got to stop. That's got to stop. And that's what we're going to do today. That's the issue we're holding up. I passed every drug test they've given me. I made every required meeting, and I have managed to go by all the other rules of my parole agreement. But I've been picked up by the Milwaukee the Police Department multiple times because of the electronic monitoring system that is supposed to track me wherever I go. Has reported I was someplace where I shouldn't be. One time, the system reported that I was in the middle of Lake Michigan. And for real. I mean, no, this is not, I mean, it's funny, but this is serious, y'all. I was in jail for five days before they came to install a new bracelet to police me. If I had a regular job, I would have lost it. I'm thankful that Redeemer Lutheran Church, where I cook for the community meals, understand and let me come back for my job. You need to understand, if you understand anything about mental health, once an 18-year-old goes in there, after coming from the street, and he goes in there and he does 18 months, it is simply ridiculous for you to expect him to come out here and be a vital part of the community. Welcome you all to the Wisdom 11 by 15 Comprehensive Prison Reform Program. We now come before you today stating that we are not going to go silently in the night. We will not become a Ferguson, Missouri where we let all of these things go about unanswered until they blow up in our faces. This is a proactive method that we are using to address these situations, speaking for those who can't speak for themselves, and showing that we are a diverse community with diverse religion and diverse backgrounds, saying that we're going to stand up with one voice and with one intention is to make sure that justice is brought to those individuals who are incarcerated. We can't let this go unheard and un unaddressed. We have too much waste in human capital. We have too many lives that are going by the wayside that we can't account for. It's making our communities unhealthy. It's making our communities unsafe. Locking people up and locking them away does not make our communities safe. It makes it dysfunctional. Today, we together call on our governor, the Department of Corrections, and our state legislator to make it clear that Wisconsin will not revoke a parolee's parole status unless a new crime has been committed. Yeah. We are calling on the Department of Corrections to administer the electronic monitoring program in a way that does not incarcerate a parolee when the GPS equipment goes bad or fails. Dehumanizing dehumanizing people in front of their families and friends. He had a case pending, but the charges were dropped. 
When the decision was made to revoke his parole, he asked his parole officer, why is my parole being revoked? And she simply said, and I quote, I want you off my caseload. I want you off my caseload. So he returned to prison and spent a year and two months finishing his sentence prison, prison, prison sentence. Needless to say, for this former, former offender to have his parole revoked simply because his parole officer didn't want to deal with him no longer, left him with anger and a deep distrust in the correction system. He said he was convinced that the system had no intention to help him succeed. It seemed to him that the system was only intent on punishing, punishing, and punishing. Yep. He said that if his parole officer was really trying to help him succeed, his chances would have been a whole lot better. There's hundreds of stories like this in this building. That's true. Yeah. There's hundreds of stories that come through Project Return that we hear about. Now, it's really a shame when someone can make a personal sentiment with the stroke of a pen and destroy a livelihood. That's it. That's it. That, is, that, is, that is vindictive. And when you're talking about an attitude and power in a position like this with a vindictive attitude, you know what that is? They're no better than the streets they're trying to keep safe. That's it. That's it. So that's why we're here, for reform. For these type of policies that shake up and bring down livelihood. No one in Wisconsin should be proud of the fact that our state has the dubious distinction of being uh, the poster child uh, for the mass incarceration of African American males. The costs involved, both economic and social, are staggering. More than any other place in the nation, Wisconsin needs reform in this area. It will require a comprehensive approach. The Milwaukee branch of the NAACP totally supports Micah Wisdom's 11 by 15 initiative. So my question to every one of us and those people who are not here who should be here, what you gonna do about it? Each one of us have a responsibility for our brothers and sisters who are experiencing inhumane treatment because you know what? We legislated it in and we allow it to remain. So we don't only need to knock on DLC's door, we need to knock on our legislators' door. <laughs> We need, to we need to knock on our university doors. Yes. We need to knock on our state Supreme Court doors. Yes. Yes. And we, of course, need to knock on our governor's door. Yes. So what I'm saying here, and I can make it long, but I'm going to make it short. You are welcome to join our uh, uh, action meeting. Prison action should be on the on the ground in Green Bay, in Madison, in Racine, yes, in Kenosha, yeah, in Waukesha, yeah, because we are all going down together. Under current law, the Department of Corrections may put anyone on GPS supervision for a lifetime. And tragically, the GPS system has a history of sending out false alerts and in some locations, like concrete buildings, failing to work at all. Former inmates who wear the GPS bracelet can be reincarcerated for repeated failures of the GPS technology over which they have no control. The Wisconsin Council of Churches believes the recommendations offered by the Reform Now campaign are sensible first steps to address the injustices in our state's revocation system. Thank you so much. If the two of you would introduce yourselves and just tell us what you will do with the letters. My name is Lucas Wyshnitsky. I work with the governor's office and I'm an advance coordinator. I'll make sure that this letter gets to our office and that the governor has a chance to vote for it. Um, I'm Sarah Watson. I'm a probation hall supervisor with the Department of Corrections and I will make sure that our regional and um, state management and central office get this letter. 